So in this video, I'm going to quickly talk about what is mean by non-shiver thermogenesis. Non-shiver thermogenesis. So it means the thermal means heat. Genesis means production of the heat. So and a shiver is when you actually your body moves. So it means your body doesn't move and it still produces a heat. So it is being characterized by that. So what does it actually mean by it? So let's say um, you are uh, you just maybe dive into a very freezing lake and that goes minus zero Celsius, you know, that goes below than zero Celsius. So then inside your at cold temperature as an external stimuli would, uh, would uh, be sensed by hypothalamus of your brain. Now, hypothalamus of the brain. Now, hypothalamus of your brain senses this cold temperature. As, as a result of that, it would secrete release of a specific hormone called norepinephrine. Norepinephrine, or as it's called, or called uh, norad, norad Adrenaline. Okay, they're the same meaning, they're just some uh, different words used in different English vocabulary. So, this via a sympathetic nerve uh, being released into the blood circulation, but these are hormones, right? So, the hormone requires a binding to a specific receptor. So, what is a specific receptor? Now, this non shiver thermogenesis is being really characterized in specific cells, and they are called the brown adipose tissues. So, brown adipose tissue, or BAT in short, having really been studied extensively because they are the one that really shows mostly the um, biological processes of the non shiver thermogenesis. And this is because solely to a couple of reasons. One of which is presence of a high and rich amount of mitochondria. We're going to discuss why is this the case and why is this important. So there is a plain of mitochondria in these kind of cells, hence the result of calling brown. Also, there are some kind of uncoupled protein here as well. We're going to discuss this soon. So presence of uncoupled protein called thermogenity. It's thermo, thermo something like that okay so so keep this into mind so you have the hormone being released in the blood circulation then it's go once it goes to brown adipose tissue it meets a specific receptor so let me get rid of that so it meets a specific receptor so let's say this is our norepinephrine okay np or norepinephrine what you like what what where you want like this call it. So here, if this is our, maybe the brown adipose tissue cell, I mean the membrane, and uh, there is a specific receptor called that um, this blue um, and, and norepinephrine would bind to is called beta, um, I think, something like an adrogenic receptor, something similar name to that. Beta adrenergic receptor. Um, upon binding the norepinephrine to the beta adrenergic, adrenergic receptor, a specific G coupled protein that I'm going to extensively discuss it in the future videos is being, is being activated upon conformational change. So, B coupled protein. So, if this is, this is G coupled protein. that upon binding of that specific conformational chain is being done. So this G-coupled protein is being activated. So why is this important? So upon activation of G-coupled protein, they are going to get, um, they, in more detail, I'll explain later, but know that this specific subunit of G-coupled protein known as G-alpha, alpha protein, alpha subunit, would then go on to activate specific enzyme known as adenyl cyclase. So why is it important? So it stimulates the activation of the adenyl cyclase because adenyl cyclase would then 
stimulate the activation of uh, cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP from ATP. Okay, so ATP is being used to convert to CAMP. And we know the CAMP is a secondary messenger. That is, it encodes a message from the NP, from the hypothalamus, to, in this case, phosphorylated target protein. Now, target protein, in this case, is, uh, I think, it is hormone-sensitive lipase. Okay? So, again, you're having this being activated. And this activation, really, is being done by phosphorylation. Okay, so become phosphorylated upon in an extremely cold environment. And of course, once the cold environment is gone, NP is gone, and we have a phosphatases cleaving this, uh, no longer producing this kind of um, target protein, no longer activate this kind of target protein. But um, we don't care about that, that issue here. We're talking about activation. So we have this been activated. What else? So this hormone sensitive lipase is important because it converts the triglycerides because recall this is bone adipose tissue. We expect to have a lot of fats in there, and um, you know the triglyceride is one of the main components of it. So it converts the triglyceride into fatty acids. So we have TG or triglycerides into fatty acids. So why is it important? So notice by now. So we have uh, fatty acids is being released, being formed. Okay. So let me get rid of that. So quickly. Right. So we have fatty acids being formed a lot, you know, from TG. So why is this important? Now let's go back to the first point I've mentioned that there is a lot of mitochondria here. Okay, so mitochondria is very important. Okay? So let's say okay, this is the big mitochondria inside a cell. I mean, it's not it's not a real size of it. I'm just making it hypothetical so you can have a better understanding. Now, this is very impo important to have understanding of electron transport chain. So make sure you understand that topic before you um, come and watch this part of the lecture. So we know in the last stage of the respiration, it's electron transport chain inside of mitochondria where um, we have electrons flowing from, let's say, so here maybe it's a matrix. This is matrix of the mitochondria. This is a matrix of mitochondria, and this is intermembrane space. Space of mitochondria. So, you know, at the last stage, we have an electron coming up from this uh, I think curve cycle. Uh, from complex one, you know, it flows, flows as it flow, as electron is flowing from the four complexes. We're pumping out hydrogen, okay? We are making a hydrogen gradient. We are, we are forming a lot of hydrogen ion um, outside of the cell. So we have a lot of hydrogen ion as electron is being flowing out, okay? Again, make sure you watch the um, um, detailed version of the electron transport chain. So we have uh, plenty of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space. And in usual case, uh, these hydrogen ions would then flow the concentration gradient, down the concentration gradient, we are a specific enzyme known as um, adenyl cyclase, I mean, uh, sorry, ATP synthase. So ATP synthase half this hydrogen ions move from intermembrane space back to the matrix and it will use the purines such as ATP plus PI. So we have a hydrogen gradient and use ADP plus phosphate to form ATP. And then we can use ATP as a uh, as a currency for our movement or whatever. So that's a regular case. But when we, come, when we talk about fatty acids, we are having a different scenario. So this is one scenario, okay? So that's, that's a one scenario, normal scenario. But let's see what happens in a fatty acid. Now, fatty acids would enhance one thing, that hardened gradient, because um, there is not only ATP synthase there. So there is, again, we go refer to the second point when I say uncoupled protein. So we have another important point, protein called uncoupled protein. A very important one. So this is uncoupled protein. 
again, similar to the here, called thermogeny. Thermogeny thing. Okay, so this is an uncoupled protein. What it does is that it again uses a hydrogen, hydrogen ion gradient inside the matrix. Okay, because again, we are having the electron being flow from complexes 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and hence, and as a result of flowing, we have a hydrogen ion pumping from hydrogen ion matrix to out from inside the matrix to into membrane space. Similar case here, it is being done. So we are having hydrogen ion from inside going outside. But in this case, when there is a fatty acids present, we no longer have ATP synthase working on. Why? Because recall, we talk about ATP synthase require ATP, adenosine. Adenosine is a purine. Now, fatty acids would inhibit the formation of the purine. So it eliminates any adenine ADP present. So fatty acids, so if this is fatty acids here, they would inhibit the formation of the ADP. So we no longer form ADP. If there's no ADP, no matter how many hydrogen ions we have here, they're not going to form ATP, okay? Because, hey, there is, no, there is no ADP to make the final move, okay? So as a result of that, we no longer form ATP, and hence the hydrogen, hydrogen ions would use another gradient known as uncoupled protein, in this case. And again, ATP synthase, you can watch a lot of YouTube videos I'm going to make the link to, to, make, to have more detailed version that really requires this, this substrate in order to move, and hence bro, bring the hydrogen gradient inside to form ATP. So if there is no ATP, it's not gonna it's not gonna function properly. So therefore we now have a hydrogen ion being um being flow from outside to inside via this uncoupled protein which acts as a transporter, thermogeny. Therefore here we no longer forms any ATP. The ATP is not being formed however it emits heat. So heat is being emitted okay so therefore, more fatty acid is present, more uh, norepinephrine hormone, more long-lasting more long -lasting the effect of the hormone is, more heat is being produced because more CNP is, is being produced, more triglyceride is being converted to fatty acid as a result of that, and therefore we are producing a lot of heat and no ATP. It's very important, so no ATP, only heat. As a result of the uncoupled transporter called uncoupled protein protein called thermogenesis. And this is really what it's all about, non-sure thermogenesis. And I hope you guys find this video helpful.